Hi everyone, David Maley here, and today I'm going to show you exploratory data analysis through ClickSense. ClickSense is one of the top business intelligence tools out there, and it's also what's really neat about it is it's freely available for you to use on a limited basis. If you want to use it for a company, obviously you have to pay for their enterprise edition. But what's neat is everything I'm showing you here today is on their free edition, which you can download right off their website. And some pretty powerful stuff for data analysis. And exploratory data analysis is, an, is a very important component of data science and of predictive analytics. So if you want to do any predictive analytics, you want to see patterns, you want to see what you can do with your data, you need to do some exploratory data analysis. So what I'm showing you right here is I've got two tables. And if you want to see how I added these two tables in the Click, this is the ClickSense desk, desktop. You can go look at my previous video, which shows you exactly how to load in the data and how to get to this step. So right here I've got two tables, day and hour. I'm probably going to work with what's in the day table, but depending on your data you may want to work with, you know, if you want to work on an hourly basis on the hour table, and other data will have different tables. So I have two tables here. I can click on one and just see the data from the day table. And I can see right here I've got year, season, instant, month, holiday, weekdays. You know, I've got all these uh, different, um, let me get rid of this, columns that I can choose from here of data. I also have the hours table where if I wanted to work on things on an hourly basis I've got everything I could want here. Hours for the holiday, weekdays, A temp. A temp is your feeling temperature or what it really feels like outside versus your temp is the actual temperature. So if it's 70 degrees outside it's 70 but if the wind is high and there's a little chill in the air it might say it's 70 but it might actually feel like 65 or it could be the opposite. Um, so that's how that works. And I can also click on the middle and see how they're bound together and see the exact uh, for both tables together. Okay. So what I want to do for exploratory data analysis, we want to first look at the data. And I showed you that primarily in the previous video. So you want to look at it and make sure you have the correct data. You want to make sure you have all the correct fields. You want to look at the fields and look at how the meanings is. Like, for instance, in this case, you've got bike rentals. Obviously, you know, going into this, you've got temperature, feeling temperature, or A temp. You've got seasons, years, months, and those are probably going to be some important factors in this. So then what you're going to do is you want to start visualizing things. So when we want to start visualizing stuff, what we want to do is we want to uh, pick the important stuff that we want. We want to see what we can extrapolate from the data. So let's look at this. This is a sheet that I quickly made up. And this has some uh, scatter plots. It has a box plot. It has a uh, bar chart. And then it has some KPIs. Now, you can get this from any data. It doesn't matter. In this case, what I did was I plotted the temperature versus the feeling temperature. So you can quickly see by looking at this that there is a very uh, big correlation. It's like a straight line, basically, here. And if you want to see the properties of this, what's neat about click is you just click on any of these graphs as we're making it, you can see the dimensions. So in this case, I have rentals, or in this case, it's count. Count is your total number of rentals. Um, and you can see the measures I have. So I have count, and then the measures are A temp, or the feeling like temperature, and temperature, which is temp. And you can go in and look at all of the fields on either both tables or you can limit it to the day tables I did here and you can see there's a temp cat which is the feeling temperature casual is uh, new rentals uh, down below registered is old rentals um, we have temper which is the temperature you have wind speed you have humidity so we're going to use a lot of those in this so let's hit cancel um, so that's how that one came out I've got um, the dimension of count against two measures feels like temperature and temperature and you see them here and it plots it. it's a straight line so that's a correlation so obviously as the temperature and a temperature rise they are very correlated so we can use either inter you know inter combined we can use either one um, also what I have over here is I have temperature by itself and we have it marked against uh, rentals so if you go and click on this you'll see this is not just regular formula so what I have is I have two measures I have temperature 
and I have the average count because I want the daily. So this is daily rentals, okay? So average would be daily, some would not be daily. And up here for dimension, I actually have a function called class. And what that does is it takes the temperature and it's going to plot all the points. And so what I've got is temp comma zero dot zero zero three zeros one. And if you change this, and I add another zero in there, it'll add more points. If I bring it back, it'll remove some points. And you just want to find where you can find a good, valid uh, group of data that you can pull some insight from. That's what we're trying to do here is pull insights from our data that we're, going to, that we're visualizing so we can show our user and say, hey, there are some uh, events or there are some conditions that we can pull and we can possibly predict some stuff with. So in this case, you can see as the temperature goes up, okay, and we probably want to uh, do this. Why that disappear there? But we probably want to multiply it by a factor of 100, and that way we have the temperature in a scale of 100, which we're used to. So uh, I had that in there earlier, must have not fallen out. But regardless, uh, so you can see here as the temperature is between 40, actually really between about 50 and 80 is the solid hit of your customer base, because what happens is your rentals start to drop off as your temperature goes down. So even though you have a lot of rentals in here, the rentals um, are falling off. Same thing when you get above 80 degrees, it completely stops. You see there's nothing at 90 degrees or 100 degrees. It's very uncomfortable. People don't want to go renting a bike or go biking at that temperature. Same thing with down here, zero, and down here below, it starts to drop. Okay, your best average is in here. Uh, then you can also look at humidity. So uh, this one is humidity, and what I've done is the same thing, same formula, class of humidity, and you've got four or three zeros and a one, which gives me more data points. And I can quickly see that as the humidity is very low, here we have very few rentals. See that? And uh, as the uh, humidity is a little bit higher, we have the vast majority of rentals, and then the daily average starts to drop off once it hits over 80 percent people aren't as comfortable they still will rent maybe they do shorter trips maybe they do different things but the fact is that your main base of rentals is in here then we also have wind speed where we do the same kind of formulas so we've got wind speed is right here you can see class of wind speed and then our measures for that are wind speed and the average count which is the rental so I don't know if I showed that in this one in humidity it's basically the same thing you plot the class of the humidity against the humidity we multiply that by 100 for humidity to get the uh, temperature correctly the numbers to be the, show the actual temperature and then the average count is the rental so back to wind speed uh, we did the same thing this is times 80 because we don't necessarily need to see when it's 100 miles an hour and the reason being is I could go and show you when it's you know a higher number here and watch what happens there's really nothing beyond these this one point so let's go back to 80 and what we see here is is that it all cuts off right about here okay so people are comfortable with renting a bike and riding it when it's you know 10 mile an hour when they like a little breeze obviously because it drops off at zero and it actually probably at about Four miles per hour of wind speed they like to have a little breeze and it's very good up to 20 and then it gets more scattered and light and then it really starts to drop off after 30 people don't like high winds so then that's what that that graph shows and then we've also got this graph down here these are all easy to make on uh, click sense here and this one here is a box plot what's neat about this one is it shows the rentals versus month and you can see right here how we're doing this. So we've got dimensions of year that we took from it. Here's the formula actually. Just go out here and we would just pick day and we would just pick uh, in this case year which is right there. That's the year field that we pick. And then we just hit apply. It's already in there so I don't need to do that. Um, and then we also have a dimension of month. So you have to add that dimension in 
same thing. So you would go here, you would go here, and it's right there. You would add that in, it's already in there. So let me close that out. And then you have to have a measure. So in this case, we have the measure of average count, which is our total rentals, or total rentals for the day, actually. So it's not maximum count, it's just average count, which gives you the, the average for the day. And you can see in here 0, 5, and obviously 10 would be up here. And this shows you the breakdown of the range per month. So like in January, you know, it'll show you this. And I'm going to go a little bit more into that when I go through all these. I'm going to click Done and go out to the actual sheet itself. This is the build sheet. Um, and I'll show you a little bit more about that because it actually shows you the a little bit more data behind it. Um, this right here is a bar chart. And this one's really neat because this plots year over year. Okay, and I'll show you that in just a second. And it shows, you know, 2011 versus 2012, which is really nice to show your users. This is all great stuff to show your users. That's the main point of doing exploratory data analysis. You want to be able to show your users, hey, we have some correlations. We have some insight here. And we want to show it to you what we can do with this. You're building your case to, you know, uh, build a model and then show the users what you can do with that model and prediction wise. So this is just the exploratory data analysis. We're not going to go into predictive analytics with this video. So then I have some KPIs here. We have average daily rentals. You can see the formula here is just the average count. Uh, total users, in this case, is the sum of the count. Average registered users. So we do have, it's the field's called registered. So count actually equals casual plus registered. Okay, so in this case, registered is just your, your subscribed users, your people that are return users. And then your new users are your casual. See right here, that's the field casual. And so that shows them exactly on it. These are your KPIs, exactly your average daily rentals, your total users, your average registered users, and your average new users. Now, you can click this Done button right here. And what this is going to do is it's going to show you an active actual dashboard, which is really cool because I can go and lasso the data, I can go and focus in on something, but it also stretches it out a little bit. So what I was just showing, you could see the linear thing for your, uh, for your users that when you want to show uh, the relationship between temperature and feels like temperature, so you can use either one of them throughout, and they both have that great correlation in them. You can show temperature, exactly what we were talking about, how the breakdown is once it hits about 30 degrees and below, it drops off significantly. It actually even starts dropping off at 40. Um, and then it also drops off at over 80 and your main hit is right here uh, it also shows you humidity you know how the effect of the humidity percentage on the rentals the wind speed effect on the rentals obviously you can see where it drops off and then you've got rentals uh, per month this is the uh, box plot I was showing you what's neat about this is watch this is the neat part it actually shows you the first quartile third quartile your median so you can see the breakdown of exactly where, like when you see up here, you see this wide swath of data. But the thing is, it doesn't give it necessarily tell you how close they are to each other. This one does. So it actually shows you uh, your breakdown of between the third and first quartile is 50% of your data for that month. And so it shows you there's a wide range in March, very narrow in this December. Um, and you can go through this. Uh, all of this and um, the same thing over here let me get rid of this and this is your box plot so you can go here and actually see I should have made this users here instead of average count that's my mistake but that's no big deal that's just changing the label but you can see here year over year obviously it tells you which one is 2011 which one's 2012 2012 is obviously a better year than 2011 but you can actually see the growth year over year. You can see in January the difference, February, March, that's pretty neat to see for your users. You can also say, oh, well, November was a little bit off. It wasn't in this case, but if it were, I could circle that. Or I could circle March and say, well, that's, or, you know, any of these months, I can circle them and see what I want to look at. Um, I can look at anything I want in this data. So let's say I wanted to go, this is what's neat about this. I can click on the data and watch this. See this little lasso thing here? I can go and do this for my users and say, let's say I want to show them the areas where it's really the average. Let's just say right here, I want to show them that. Boom, what's going to happen is now all of my data reflects what I just picked. And I can save that if I want, 
or I can go back to it in a different way. Everything reflects that data. Everything is changed to just show this data, which is the vast majority of our users. See that right there? That That is where that, that is. So I can go and close that. It reverts back to what it was. And from this, you now have shown correlations. You know that the temperature, there's certain days that are more interesting than others. We could also go and break it out for weekdays and see what days of the week are more interesting. And actually, if you did that, you'd probably find out that Saturdays are days of opportunity at certain times of the year. And maybe by seeing things like that, you could find or days where there's a lower humidity. Maybe you do, uh, you know, you can figure it out by looking at weather.com and other channels and see what days are going to have that low humidity. And you could do uh, maybe specials. Uh, want, get one rental, get one free, encourage like group couple rentals. You could do all kinds of things. That These are just areas of opportunity. And this doesn't just have to be with bike rentals. It could be anything. It could be groceries. It could be uh, online sales, anything. You can find areas where you have weakness. So like here's wind speeds too high on these days. Okay, maybe we find something else. Maybe we find another avenue for these people besides just bike rentals. Maybe maps, walking maps, you know, it's just all kinds of ideas of things you can do. That's what's neat about exploratory data analysis. And then what you can do is you can take this and predict, you know, on a better than just by looking at some graphs and just, you know, eyeing things and uh, actually predict and say, okay, here's an 82% chance when you build a model with this, which we're going to go into in another video and say, here's an 82% chance or an 84% chance or a 76% chance based on the model and uh, say I can put in this data in there and so I can tell you that with an 86 percent chance or whatever it is that this is going to happen and people that are doing that every day with movies when they create movies uh, Paramount and the other movie theaters grocery stores are doing this every day with how they stock their shelves to figure out how they don't want to have too much they don't want to have too much waste or shrinkage and they want to figure out what works best in pl product placement you also have people doing this in the finance industry to figure out and try and predict where the economy is going. Um, so what you can do with predictive analytics and especially with exploratory data analysis, which you can't do anything else without that, um, the sky's the limit. And there's a lot of fun and a lot of great things you can do with that. All right, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, Again, this is with Click I used. You can use other applications to do the same thing, but it gives you an idea of how I took data and I just went and found some quick correlations. Now I can use these to go further and explore further with that. I can delve into the correlations. I can delve into linear relationships. I can delve into uh, insights that uh, what you want to build here, the outcome of your exploratory data analysis, you want something visually like this that you can show your users and say, hey, here are the insights I'm getting. Here is some of the info I'm getting. Now I want to go further and I want to go further by showing you this area. I want to go further by showing you this area. I want to go whatever it is. And once they can visually see it, they'll be like, yeah, go ahead and do that. That sounds great. That's interesting. This is great for businesses in all niches. I hope you found this helpful. Please uh, take a moment and subscribe down below. Like this and uh, leave a comment. I love to hear from my viewers and subscribers. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I got more great videos like this coming out and uh, would love to hear from you. Thanks again and have a great day.